the leadership, you have a lot to contribute. And then for supporting this, the next international workshop, I mean, there will be one next January still in Los Angeles, but also after Dublin, six, seven months later, the first workshop outside the United States will take place in Sevilla in Spain. So end of January 2025, make sure that you put that in your calendar already. Sevilla, Spain, this is the prestigious INCOSI international workshop. And make sure that you are there and you meet your colleagues from the global working groups working on the same topics as you do. Okay, now I want to talk about the system engineering vision and its evolution towards the future of engineering and a little bit how this fits into the strategy of INCOSI. So we have submitted end of last year, the new system engineering vision 2035. Everybody is free to download this from the website. And this vision is, has two major chapters. The first one is the global context, then the state, the current state of systems engineering, the future states of system engineering, and then a few words about realizing the vision. Uh, and of course, that is something I will come uh, later on uh, to you. Now, if we look to this in more detail, there was quite a history about that. So INCOSI started already in 2020, no, in 27, in 27 to roll out the first vision, uh, which was at this time the vision 22, uh, 20, 2020. And then we had the last one, which was rolled out in 2014. And last year then, lately, the vision 35. Now, what is remarkable here is a major turning point, I think, in the history and in the engagement of INCOSI. Because in the past two visions and in the history of INCOSI, we were typically an organization where system engineering meant engineering. So that means there was a focus on technical product development. And David uh, Entlock gave me a, a nice uh, example this morning, because all the complex systems he mentioned were technical products. There were ships and there were submarines and there were airplanes. So this is typically what system engineering was associated up to now with, uh, and also true in Incozy. And, and also the old visions, let's say, were somehow emphasizing this topic. Now, what is very clear and what is now changing, the vision 35 is turning this around and uh, into a broader, application of system engineering and system thinking, some people say, and that is maybe more appropriate for that purpose, of system principles and system thinking principles to solve the problems of our planet. And this is why one of the first graphics you see in this vision 35 is what we already saw later today, earlier today. These are the United Nations Sustainable Development Goals. This is not about technology and technical products. This is about the survival at a good status of our planet and humanity. Uh, and this is about food and poverty, and this is about sustainability and climate. And of course, I think uh, everybody in the room perfectly understands that the challenge of this, of course, is the think system thinking aspect of that, because none of those are nice isolated problems you can, you can pick and you do something, uh, let's say, against it. This is all interconnected. This is the big system of system of our planet. And everybody who wants to contribute to that and to do something, of course, needs to apply system thinking and, and all the methodologies and the ways of working we are let's say, suggesting today for technical product development, they are also applicable uh, here to policy makers, uh, to non-engineers, to, to economy and, and so on. Uh, and, and that is what currently is the turning point, that the vision is suggesting this very strongly. And at the very end, I will tell you that this also very strongly currently impacts the strategy of INCOSI, how we position ourselves for the future towards that. A side remark on that. So the United Nations Sustainable Development Goals uh, have been put in place, I think, uh, eight years ago or so. Uh, and just this week, there's the United Nations General Assembly in New York. 
and the world and they are currently looking as a as a United Nations to the status of this of the achievement of those sustainable development goals. And the World Economic Forum is currently in parallel to that in New York, executing a workshop with key people exactly looking into the same thing. How, how did we progress? Uh, what needs to be done? And we all can imagine that progress is far not what it should be at this point in time. So that means the awareness of, let's say, those goals and the awareness of the fact that we need to do something different, I think is globally present. And that's the opportunity for, I mean, we are a small organization, we, we shouldn't be too naive uh, what that we can change the world. However, we are a prestigious organization and we are everywhere in the world and our people can contribute to introduce system engineering principles to those people who try to meet those challenges. Okay, then uh, the global context, which is offered at the beginning um, of that uh, vision. It's a bit difficult to read. I come to the details a, a little bit in, in the next slides, but it's about understanding on the top left, the global megatrends. It's on the top right, the, the changes in stakeholder needs. On the bottom left, the technology trends. And at the bottom right, the, the trends in enterprises and the way enterprises operate. And in the middle here is the picture which represents the fact that we are widening the application domains from pure technical to more, let's say, resource management and agriculture and climate and all these kinds of things. So that means this is the whole context which is at the beginning of their thinking. And uh, if you would have told a system engineer 10 years ago uh, that, that this is the starting point for a system engineering vision, they would have laughed at you. But I think now we are also maturing as a discipline that we can understand that this is the context where we can help a lot. And also the context in which we continue to operate our traditional stuff, we still will build technical product, of course, but the technical products are, let's say, developed, produced, operated, uh, and serviced put out of operations in that global context and also that means also that we have to contribute in this context for our technical products and the global context here so the first one is the variety of domains uh, I, per I personally also uh, uh, strongly believe that things like healthcare agriculture and financial systems are important because financial systems of course de facto, these are the systems who dominate, let's say, what, what's going on on the planet. Still, it's the financial interest, it's the commercial interest. This is what drives everything. So that means also contributing to the design execution of financial systems and financial decision makers, economic decision makers. That is an area uh, where we need definitely help to contribute and to influence. In other words, I mean, this is not complete. I mean, if I would have written that, I would have added some bubbles like natural resource management, water management, uh, climate change. They are not here, but th this is not because they are not, uh, uh, let's say, thought to be important, but uh, because this is just an example. Uh, and we, are, we, we need also to evolve that vision in order to recognize those other things which are getting more and more important. The megatrends. I mean, and we, the first one, and I think this is, this is no surprise, we heard that already this morning in a couple of presentations, one of the megatrends is sustainability. Um, and of course, if you read the vision document and you search for sustainability, you find this word 150 times. So, I mean, that is, that is really something that I think that's probably the most used term in the whole vision document is sustainability. Uh, and, and I think that is definitely something which, of course, needs, is, is per se a system problem and needs system engineering thinking and system engineering principles to help. Then we have this large interdependent world. Uh, the globalization with respect to supply chain and the associated difficulties we all know from the recent years. We have the big digital transformation also in our developed countries, there's still a lot to be done uh, and a lot to be 
let's say, carefully designed in that digital transformation. We have these Industry 4.0 and what came up in Japan as a society 5.0. So that means the interconnection of the, the human inspiration, let's say, with the with the technology developments, uh, the, the new means and aspects of artificial intelligence to bring that together uh, under one societal umbrella. This is one of the governmental strategies and, and priorities in Japan, as an example. Then the smart systems. And we heard this morning already there was a question about complexity growth. I mean, that complexity, if we want or not, we have no influence on that. That complexity is growing now in the status and the system of system where we are. I believe it's naturally growing if we want or not. And sometimes we are a little bit contributing to this because we want to smart, smartly connect some of the existing systems into something new. And then we add also a little piece of complexity. But complexity is definitely something we cannot avoid, and we have to take a care about this, like many others. <clears throat> now, the, the uh, technologies, and um, the document gives more details on that, but I mean, there is, of course, this technology evolution uh, on energy, on bio and life science technologies, communication, uh, autonomy, artificial intelligence, big data, name them. I think you are a community who perfectly understand what those technology trends are. Uh, and they are next to these, uh, let's say, global mega trends, a major area of attention, opportunities, and risks which are coming up, which we need to deal with uh, on the way forward. Next one are the growing stakeholder expectations. Uh, and here, um, starting in that sequence, Simple is a very important one. I mean, in the way we grow complexity of our system, we go complexity of the what we, uh, let's say, ask the users and humans who are part of those systems and who are using it. We ask them, let's say, very terrible uh, things in terms of user interface and the way they have to adapt to the, the system rather than the other way around. So simplicity for, for humans, uh, in the future, that is that is an important stakeholder expectation. Same one is safe. So all of these elements of autonomy, for example, if we think about autonomous driving, and there will be more autonomous things happening in the world. Luckily, but however, we need to make sure that these things are, are organized in a way that they are safe for humans and for the property of humans and for nature and environment. Secure that is about all the cybersecurity threats we are having. Clearly, there, there's an exponential growth, I would think, about the threats and the difficulties we might expect in that area. Smart, stable and predictable. I mean, today things are not stable and predictable in operations. There, there are breakdowns. You have to restart applications. Uh, your internet connection is down, your mobile connection is down. I mean, there are so many things which occasionally do not work. That is something where we need to make sure that we are more stable and predictable in the future. Maintainable, socially acceptable. That is getting more and more, of course, um, important very much linked also with the sustainability issue, which is here underlying, still affordable and scalable from very small applications down to the big things uh, we have, uh, let's say, on the planet. And all of that has to be ethically correct and trustworthy. So that means still, um, I like to quote personally in those discussions, Mr. Nobel, who invented the dynamite, I mean, he had all the good things in mind when he did that. Unfortunately, humans are inventive also on the other side, on the black side of, uh, let's say, of the planet. And so we need to make sure that everything is applied rightly in an ethical and trustworthy way. Then our enterprises and education systems, they are changing too. So the enterprises now, they are facing uh, already since a couple of years, but they're facing globalization and diversity. And, and we all have seen during the pandemic and what's currently going on, that globalization uh, has its 
pros, but also its risk. If we look to the dependency on certain supply chains, on certain materials around the world, which might not be accessible in the future. So for companies and enterprises, globalization is a real uh, challenge. Um, sustainability and ethics, we mentioned that already. System thinking is something which comes more and more luckily into, let's say, the, the presence and the day-to-day -day, uh, uh, mindset of enterprises, but not, not yet, let's say, sufficiently. Enterprises need to anticipate the technology, not stay where they are, luckily where they are. So, as a German, I can say, so the German car manufacturers might have anticipated technology evolution a little bit earlier. Uh, supply, supply chain I mentioned already, and then all these enterprise intelligence, decision making uh, and learning in an enterprise that needs to be reinvented. Uh, that also in the light of what, what is on the very right of that chart here, the education systems of the future. That is about continuous learning much more than, let's say, going to university, get your degree, and then start working and learn a little bit online. I mean, this is, this is continuous learning, and, and uh, enterprises are not yet uh, rightly established and, and prepared for, for supporting that and organizing that rightly. And automation and the digital transformation. Uh, that's where they are suffering today, and, and they know that they need to do that. So this is the, the enterprise context. Context. So all of this was about the context, and um, and, and and this is new for the system engineering vision. As I said, that this is so dominantly, uh, let's say holistically explained uh, as a starting point, as the context for system engineering to further evolve. Now the future state, and I'm, I'm skipping here the current state and so on, the future state as it is given in that uh, vision is very much about system engineering will be model-based. It shouldn't be a surprise to us here again in the room, uh, but clearly, and this, this is also a little bit further to just applying model-based methodologies to a little bit of architecture, requirements management, and so on. So to our core system engineering methodologies. This means system engineering is model-based in an, in, an, in an extended digital ecosystem, integrating all other engineering and non-engineering discipline in one ecosystem along the life cycle, making sure that there is a digital twin established, which is traveling through the life cycle uh, with the participation of all the models of all relevant disciplines at the same time. So this is what the future trend is, what we need to work on. And our DO tool vendors, of course, are also currently not yet in a business case model uh, where they are so enthusiastic in supporting this. Artificial intelligence, and here it is artificial intelligence, not as a characteristic of the system, but artificial intelligence will assist system engineers in the future doing their work. We will be supported more and more by artificial intelligence, uh, and I think a couple of you have already tried the things like ChatGPT, and I did. Uh, I was amazed uh, what kind of support you can get. However, of course, the major trend has also, uh, as we all know, um, also major risks. So, of course, it's a system challenge to apply this in the right sense and mitigate the risk associated with that rightly. In addition to that, there's an explosion of data. So if we want to be model-based and have those digital twins traveling along our life cycle, that means there's a huge amount of data. So that means data analytics will be a major system engineering tool in the future to do our work uh, and, and, uh, and our practice. Then education and training, as I said, is, uh, uh, is definitely something which will be continuous in the future. And, and, uh, and our technical and leadership competencies need to be renewed regularly and continuously. And System engineering will, and this is the one I like so much, will be embraced by um, a greater number of broader and small and medium-sized enterprises, because currently there are still somehow hesitating, because it has this flavor of 
huge documentation, additional efforts, non-value adding things, and so on. I think we are currently in a transition period that this is much more recognized than the benefit system thinking and system engineering brings. And also the future trend, I would say here, it is an application to non-technical areas, as I said before. Now, the future state in the vision document is defined by scenarios which say from to, so they describe the current state and the future state. And it's for you to, uh, at a nice weekend, to read that through. This is the list of scenarios which are in the document. Um, and I think there are a couple of interesting things in there. One of them is an example, again, just for you here. So this is how it looks like, for example, for, uh, for the future is predominantly model-based and there is a from and a to statement. And clearly today the from statement is that we have, uh, what is the right word here? Somehow a, an uneven application across sectors uh, within an organization. We have a fragmented and, and unstandardized set of tools. Which, which we have difficulties to get together and to orchestrate into a single process. While in the future, definitely system engineers routinely have virtual models in place linked to ontologies and to, to digital models, including all from all other disciplines so that you can orchestrate as a system engineer, the digital twin, do the correct, do the configuration management, the version management, the impact analysis of the digital twin in the design phase, the digital twin of the production and maintenance facilities, the digital twins of the, uh, let's say, the product in service. So all of that will be nicely orchestrated uh, in single, uh, let's say, simulate modeling and simulation frameworks supported by the future tool sets. So it's a vision, no? just to remind that. Another element of the future state is the impact of artificial intelligence. And this has two parts. So the black part here is something I will not repeat at all. You can read that in the document. So this is how artificial intelligence and machine learning and so on will be used by systems engineering for applying their processes to so supporting our system engineering activities. The brown part of that is so how, what is it what system engineers do need to take care about in the future because artificial intelligence is embedded in the system we are designing. So that means that, and now I also need to carefully read here, uh, that means we need to make sure that we adapt our verification and validation uh, processes carefully to these ambiguous systems and undeterministic systems we are creating based on artificial intelligence. We need to have the competence in system engineering to understand what is artificial intelligence, let's say machine learning, what is data analytics and those things, because they are part of the system, as we need to understand today already what is software development, what is electrical and hydraulic. So that is one of the upcoming disciplines, which naturally are critical to systems engineers to understand them as part of the systems under consideration and under development. <clears throat> Side remark again. So um, there is an opportunity right now that in October 11 and 12, uh, there is an interesting workshop co-organized between INCOSI and the System Engineering Research Center. So that is a two-day workshop on AI for SE and SE for AI. So that means artificial intelligence for system engineering and system engineering for artificial intelligence embedded into our products. So this, I think this is free of charge if I rightly remember. So if you are interested in that, you may consider um, to register for that. The system engineering challenges in summary towards the future are those applications. So that means that system engineering strongly contributes to major societal challenges, that system engineering demonstrate value uh, also for other, let's say, uh, at other scales and for increasing number of domains, which are also the non-technical domains. Our practices will be very much model-based, as we said, analytic frameworks, 
uh, for working in and the widely adopted reviews and product policy. Then we have a tool environment, as we said earlier, which uh, basically has an integrated environment, a trusted collaboration and interaction also with our supply chain and with our customers. Next one is research. And that is an important point. I will come on, uh, come back to this later. So, yeah, and I, and I saved it for later. So there will be uh, system engineering practices will be based on, a, on an acceptable theoretical foundation. And interestingly, I think these are not just taught as part of a system engineering education, but they need to be taught to everybody. So that means, I believe, like project management is something where an, an, an economical person, like a, a, chemist, a chemical person, a, a, a lawyer, all of these people have to understand a little piece of project management. And they need to understand a little bit of system engineering in the sense of system thinking and system principles, so that when they later on go into their business, that they are able to understand the context in which they operate and they contribute to those with everybody else, let's say to applying the system approach as a journey. And competences and continuous ex, uh, education is the other one. So this, this is what the, the vision has identified as the major gaps and the major challenges of system engineering going into the future. Now, when we say this, there's also a list of specific uh, recommendations. I'm not, they are similar again to those, of course, linked to that. I'm not going to read them, but also there is a draft roadmap identified here over time up to 2035, when the authors of the vision believed what needs to ha be happen happening at which point in time in order to achieve that vision. <clears throat> and now on the path forward, so what is critical is at the, at the top, there's the global context, which need to be taken into account on the way forward. We have those famous pastel factors, which hasn't been mentioned before. So this stands for political, economical, social, technical, uh, legal, uh, and, and another E. So these are the factors which of course need to be taken into account as the, around the non-technical, um, let's say set of, of requirements and constraints. And on the path forward, the major point is between the current state and the future state is collaboration. Because, I mean, even if INCOSI would be, as an example, a 500,000 member organization, it would even not be sufficient at all to go in that direction to achieve this ambition. So that means it is about the collaboration that we are the thought leaders and we bring with respect to system principles. We bring this into the collaboration with other international organizations, uh, with other policy makers, so that jointly we can go forward into the future uh, in order to have a small chance uh, to, to implement that vision and to achieve that vision one day. Now with that in mind, um, I'm switching over, let's say I'm concluding here of the description of, let's say the overview of the system engineering vision as such. Now on the way forward, INCOSI has the future of systems engineering initiative. And this is why, this is because that vision will not happen alone, just because we have written that down. It needs, as we said, collaboration and effort and the way forward. So that means we need to take action uh, that we uh, um, are not foreseeing the future only, but we enable it. And the best way to predict the future is to invent it. So that means now we need to take action with that inspiration from the vision uh, on the way forward. <clears throat> and for that, we have the future of system engineering initiative. Um, and this initiative uh, actually is about uh, to engage and inspire the global community uh, towards the system engineering, the future of systems engineering and the realization of the vision. And, and for that, we are going to refine and evolve the vision because 
the document as it is here. We are not waiting another 10 years and just to write another document. We need now continuously to evolve that, uh, let's say to improve it in certain areas, adapt it to the state of the art we are having, complement it with additional aspects, refining some areas. So there's already a, find of a, a white paper existing uh, on the workforce of the future. Uh, because there's one page in the vision. However, we have major documents and major activities to be done there. So the evolution of the vision uh, is one point. And also then to identify the critical gaps between this vision and the state of the earth. Um, and then we foster the collaboration with major stakeholders around the globe, uh, let's say, to help us and to work with us towards the vision. The vision is organized, now the, the FUSE, Future of System Engineering Initiative, is organized into four different streams. The first one is dealing with what I just said, the evolution, continuous improvement of the vision itself, and the consolidation of the various roadmaps. Because there was a one-pager roadmap in the document, so this is just showing the principal ideas. Now, really, the detailed roadmaps need to be consolidated, this is done in the vision and roadmap stream. Then we have a system engineering foundation stream. Uh, and this deals with two or three different aspects. So one of, and this foundation stream, you, you see later uh, a presentation this afternoon on the foundation stream by Joshua, who is also emphasizing strongly the creation of, uh, let's say the theoretical basis of system engineering. Now, I think there, there are two parts what we need here. First, we need the theoretical basis because then we need, we can give that as an input to the, to the various, let's say, um, uh, university degrees so that all kinds of engineers and others can learn a little piece of system engineering as part of their education. But for that, they need to have this piece formalized rightly. And also system engineering need to be recognized as a discipline similar to all the others. Of course, uh, when I say this, this is not yet the case. Uh, and and I'm crit I get criticism for that. Oh yes, of course it's a discipline. Yes, I know that it is a discipline. However, it is not that discipline formally recognized by other disciplines, by industry leader and by politicians. So we need to achieve that formalization of the disciplines. Uh, and secondly, that is also needed if we want to go to reach out, if we want to go to a politician or to a non-engineering, uh, let's say, leader, in order to convince them that system principles can help them. And, think, and, and, and who are you? System engineering? What is that? So we need that credibility of being a recognized discipline, just that they even accept us to be, let's say, invited and to talk to them. And the last part of that foundation I would like to emphasize is the fact that we are still talking to many languages. Again, this morning, David mentioned that example of uh, uh, the team who did the system engine, the system definition, and there are 900 pages of information behind. That is a typical INCOSI and system engineering community behavior. We have a tremendous amount and of system engineering body of knowledge and a tremendous amount of those ideas. However, this is overwhelming people. Everybody who is a practitioner and want to come and see what is it? What is the standard practices and principles of system engineering? What is the standard glossary of term? And if I start to imp implement that on my side, I can be sure that my supply chain and my customers understand that too. And then there is this multitude of other things uh, be around this, of course, which is still critical and important and right, but to be used by the specialists in order to help to evolve the discipline. So these three parts, I think, are critical in that foundation stream, and uh, Joshua will speak about that also this afternoon. And then all the methodologies, I mean, that is, that is obvious. This is about AI, about agile, about machine learning. So all these aspects on the technical development of our auto methodologies of, of system engineering, that is in this stream. And the last one is application extension. So this is really to deal with the people who are 
working in non-traditional domains. So that means there is the smart cities initiative in there. We are talking to natural systems. We're talking with the asset management organization to collaborate with, so uh, with climate change. So the, the sustainability aspect is a little bit overlapping methodology and application extension. So, so these are the areas we are working on. So these are these four major streams uh, which we are working in in the future of system engineering in order really to put this as a number one priority in our organization uh, and to push forward so that we are have a chance to come close to the vision 35. And, and this just formalizes what I just said. This is about having a community effort with collaboration of major other organizations and so on. Um, then uh, we are, of course, working as here's an example of the methodology stream. On the right side, there are some of the typical products which come out of that stream, like principles, like measurement framework, uh, system engineering process model, agile SE, the system engineering AI primer. So these are all already products coming out there uh, on this way forward. And here's also a list of organizations we work with. And on the left side, a subset of the INCOSI working groups, uh, the 50 plus, which are identified to be relevant at the beginning uh, to contribute with their efforts and their knowledge uh, to this methodology stream. So the, the journey so far, the Future of System Engineering Initiative originally started already in 2018, uh, delivered a couple of products, as you can see here. Also, a number of those are so-called inside journals. Uh, you'll see the cover of those journals. This is a practitioner magazine of, uh, of Incosi. So they have a focus uh, on, on AI, one issue, the next issue can be on agile, on model-based. Uh, and these are also used to establish a kind of uh, summary of, of those elements of the future of system engineering. A couple of books coming out. We have system engineering principles recently published. We have a set of heuristics uh, for systems engineering. So all of that is on the journey towards the future. And a major reamplification was last year at the beginning of uh, 23 when the vision came out. Then we really put pressure on this initiative. We have uh, hired a professional uh, project management support, uh, extended the team so that we really can go forward and live up to that expectation that this critical initiative is also delivering. And, uh, <clears throat> so, I think I will I will uh, switch those ones here. So there are a couple a couple of things coming up uh, on the Fuse initiative, um, and uh, so as you see on the foundation, the first law of complexity, which is under development, and there's a lot of testing and experiments done. You will see uh, this afternoon. You will be privileged to see the first results uh, from this exercise by Joshua. Um, methodologies uh, we are moving forward and application extension we're working again we have a working group on sustainability created please make sure that those who talked about sustainability today already and the working group with marco later on i mean you are the typical suspects we are looking forward to join the sustainability uh, working group and to bring this forward and this is where also we work with smart cities and with the asset management organization. Another side remark, there is a um, calling all systems activity about, smart, about uh, sustainability uh, in INCOSI. So that means this is a moderated panel with very prestigious members uh, participating to this. So this takes place on the 19th of September. I think that is tomorrow, if I'm right. So still opportunity. Uh, 11 a.m. Eastern means this is uh, five, five o'clock in the afternoon here. So that's, uh, that's a nice thing you may consider. And the next one is on November 17th. We will do a similar format of a panel discussion on the overall future of systems engineering. So 
if you want, uh, that is also something to easily join and, uh, and listen to what's, what's going on there. So this is our team on the future of systems engineering. So Bill Miller from the United States is uh, the program lead. Erika Palmer from Norway, currently the deputy Techn technical operations director. She is the deputy lead. Uh, we have Oli De Weck from MIT for the foundation stream, supported by Joshua, who will give the presentation here today. Application extension is Tom Strandberg from Sweden. Vision and roadmap is Paul Schreinemaker from the Netherlands. And Chris Hoffman is the last, out, uh, last year's uh, technical director from Incozy working on that. And as you can see, we have already a nice balance that this is a global initiative uh, uh, with also key people already, uh, let's say, being engaged here from Europe. So now I go quickly to that. This is my last slide. Now, with, with all of what I have said in mind, we are also currently shaping uh, and defining an, an integrated INCOSI strategy. That has never been done up to now. So if you ask 22,000 members, you get 25,000 different interpretations what our strategy might be. Currently, we are doing that strategy uh, until, um, let's say, IW at the January that will be published. And that will give us orientation in the future, how we spend our energy, how we spend our budget, and what are the priorities on the way forward. Now, if I take the second bubble here first, that is about thought leadership, influence, and outreach. And this is where the FUSE initiative is in and the SE vision. And this is about influence. That means we need to be at the World Economic Forum as a partner. Uh, and we need to be as a partner at other, let's say, at the European Union, as an example, uh, at UNESCO. There we need to be heard and we, our, our voice need to be heard so that we can influence. And we need also um, influence in terms of having outreach to the executive level of our organizations. May it be industry, academia, or whatever, in politics. We need really to speak to those people uh, and get their recognition of how system engineering and, of course, through INCOSI can help them towards the Vision 35. And this is where we need a different language. This is where we need. Uh, Somebody said this morning, uh, I'm not calling this system engineering, I call this system thinking. So this where there's a lot of debate also about the term systems engineering, but whatever is behind, we need to have a kind of elevator pitch uh, in a way that we are able to access those people who have no engineering background and no system engineering background so that we can reach out to them uh, and get their contribution and their buy-in in terms of collaboration from their organizations. The left one, of course, we need to improve the, the value to our members. And that means also that Currently, the value is networking and documents, if I want to be negative. In the future, we have the, the professional development portal. We have the system engineering laboratory where you can go in as a member and use the most modern tool, let's say, for exchanging, doing working group work, exchanging models, and so on. We will uh, deliver in the future the next S system engineering handbook will not be a handbook anymore. I'm, I'm betting on that. That will be delivered in a different format. It will be a model. It will be much more integrated, uh, let's say, framework rather than a document. Uh, and we will deliver to you reference models uh, for usage and templates and pattern uh, rather than PDF documents for download. So that means those, those things uh, will happen. Also, I believe you will get one day standards issued by INCOSI themselves, rather than we contribute only to those standards. You will get training courses directly if you want from INCOSI. So that is on this part. And then the last element on the right, up, in order to do that and to live up to that expectation, we need to change our organization also from a pure volunteer organization to a more professionally, I mean, we are all professionals, of course, but non-volunteer uh, employed professional staff 
who manages our organization so that we are more robust over time, not depending on the availability that the next two years I have a couple of ideas, that the two years after another president has a couple of ideas. So we need an executive director, which we have already recruited this year, and, an, and the associated team behind for the association management, so that we really have the resources in order to guide the working groups and the various parts of INCOSI towards those roadmaps and create the products which are strategically interesting and not only those which interest the individuals and the, the, the volunteers together in working groups and they have fun doing that. Still they can do that and they should continue on that, but we need to make sure that those strategic elements are also in place and delivered and also that if we go into executive level and into collaborations with other partners, we need to be a reliable partner and a responsive partner and not one which depends on the fact if I read my emails next weekend or not. And that was it. Thank you so much. I hope that was inspiring to you. <laughs>